Well, howdy do there, everybody. I'm here to talk to you this week about Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, as all the rest of you are, too. Now, this has never been one of my favorite books. Um, I don't think it's, like, the most brilliant work of literature ever written or anything. I'm not going to exalt all its fine qualities. Um, but Ray Bradbury was definitely a brilliant man, and I really enjoyed a lot of his short stories. So if you have the time to check some of those out, they're really good. He writes a lot of really, really interesting sci-fi type things. But anyway, I first read Fahrenheit 451 in ninth grade, and it was probably the only book assigned in ninth grade that I actually finished. I did enjoy it, although my English teacher had a habit of over-examining things way too deeply and making us note every little detail and go chapter by chapter and sentence by sentence and going through everything, which is why we never finished The Once and Future King. But I haven't read it since ninth grade. I didn't reread it for this video week. I'm sorry, I'm a horrible person. I've been trying to finish Lolita, which is also very good, by the way. A bit dense, but I recommend it anyway. So I figured I would mention in this video, rather than just going over the obvious, that really the one thing I remember the best from Fahrenheit 451, the thing that has stood out the most to me from this book, is one line that Montag's wife says to him when he's he's stressed out, he's upset, and his wife suggests that he should just go take the car out on the highway and just hit a few stray dogs to make himself feel better. And this is just the line that I've remembered the most, I guess. And I think that's because the way to really create a convincing dystopian fiction world... I'm incoherent, sorry, I just got back from my rafting trip, so I'm frazzled and sunburnt. The way to, the best way to create this type of dystopian world isn't in all the massive, intense, grand-scale world building, although that's important too, but it's in the little details. It's in the little things that you throw in to make the readers realize that, hey, this is these people's way of life. This is the way they're used to living. They don't think it's ridiculous and grand scale and incredible like you do. This is just normal. So to us, going out and running stuff over with your car for fun is not a habit that is generally encouraged. But to this society of people who's been brainwashed by their TV into ignoring everything around them and all the problems around them, it just seems like a normal thing to do. Why not go kill something if it makes you feel better? Because you're most important. You're the one who matters. No one cares about anyone else. I guess I just wanted to make a point about what details like that can do and how, for someone who's forgotten a lot of the book at this point, a tiny little detail like that can be the one thing I remember the most. I also really like the bit where Montag is with all the book people at the end, the literary hobos, as my English teacher called them, and he's like, oh yeah, I've memorized Ecclesiastes. It Was, was it Ecclesiastes, I think? And they're like, oh, well, we already have another one of those, but I guess it's cool to have you two. Like, you'd think that since Montag is the most important character, he's the main character, you know, he'd be unique. No one else would have Ecclesiastes, but they're like, nope, we could always use another one. You know, even within this society of these book hobos, he's still part of a group, just in the same way he was the part of the firemen. He's not, like, their hero. He's just another guy. This time he's just another guy in a place that he wants to be. So I guess that's it. Uh, sorry about my disconnected literary rambling. I hope that was somewhat comprehensible, um, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.